Let's look at a business application of related rates. Remember, the idea of related rates is that you have two quantities that are both changing, and because the quantities are related to each other, the rates at which they're changing are also related to each other. In this case, our quantity will be monthly revenue for a company and the number of units sold per month by that company. So we have a formula given to us that tells us the relationship between the number of units sold at, per month and the monthly revenue. It's this equation here. And that's going to be our starting point for our related rates calculation. So we have that R, which is changing over time, so it's really a function of T, is related to the uh, number of units sold X, which is also changing over time, so it's a function of T. According to the formula, R equals negative 0.5 X squared plus 50 X. So both the left side in this equation are functions that are changing over time, and if they are equal to each other, then their derivatives must be equal to each other as well. So we take the derivative of both sides with respect to the variable t. Remember, we're treating time as the independent variable in this question. x is not an independent variable here. It's, it represents the number of units sold, and we're told that the number of units sold depends on this other variable t, time. Okay, so let's take a derivative. Uh, on the left side, we're going to take the derivative of r, and I don't know any other way to write that at this stage other than to write it as the derivative of r with respect to time t. On the right side, we're going to take a derivative, and wherever we see an x, remember it's a function of t, so if I have negative 0.5 times x squared, the derivative of x squared will be 2x dx dt because of the chain rule, right? x squared is really x of t quantity squared. So when we take the derivative, we get 2 times x of t times the derivative of x. And then we have this other term, 5 times x, so the derivative of that would be 5 times the derivative of x. We could simplify this a little bit. Uh, we could take negative 0.5 and multiply by the coefficient 2, turn that into negative 1. So we end up with negative x dx dt plus 5 dx dt. And we could combine like terms if we want here by writing this as 5 minus x times dx dt. That wasn't really necessary, but it does clean things up a little bit, which might make it easier for us to work with. So this is our formula relating the rate at which revenue is changing to the rate at which the number of units sold per month is changing. We can use that relationship with the given information to figure out how fast revenue is changing. Uh, when you're selling 500 units, and the rate at which you're selling units is decreasing by 10 units per month. If we plug that in here, we get the rate at which revenue is changing is 5 minus 500 times negative 10. That's going to come out to 4,950. So in this example, we see that the monthly revenue is increasing by $4,950 per month. Now this might seem a little bit bizarre because we just said that sales are decreasing by 10 units per month. So how could revenue be increasing? Well, it might be because the particular relationship between revenue and number of units sold would also depend on the price. And it might be the case that you're selling fewer units each month because you've increased the price. And therefore, you might increase the revenue as a result. It depends on whether the effect of increasing the price outweighs the effect of decreasing the number of units sold. 
The only way to be sure of that, to know which effect is greater, is to do a related rates calculation like this one.